Coming up, I'm going to help you see the easiest way to learn something new every day, I promise. And then the four-day work week, is it taking over the globe? Plus, I'm going to coach you up. Let's go. Helping you win at work and in life so that you make more money and experience more meaning, more income, more impact. In other words, I help you get the juice, baby. You got the juice. You just, you just, you just got that glow and people see, man, you're on fire. And it is possible. And by the way, the juice is free. Let's get started. So what's the easiest way to learn something new every day? I mean, is this something that is like this little uh, hack of a habit, Ken? Is that what you're going to teach me today? No. I'm not going to teach you a hack or habit. I'm going to give you some practical ways in the form of simple questions that will just naturally begin to take over your life. You won't even have to think about it. So it's not something you got to spend a bunch of time doing. It's not a something you got to buy. But it can literally change your life in that you will be guaranteed to learn something new every day. And a person who is learning is a person who is growing. If you're not learning, you're not growing. If you're not learning, you're not growing. You are withering away. It's just a fact. But instead of all having all this pressure, what if we could just take a simple exercise of reflection at the end of every day, could take just literally a matter of 60 to 90 seconds, could be more, could be with a glass of wine, could be with a cigar. Now that I bring those two options up, I'd like those two together. Uh, and, and many times at the end of the day, uh, I have this lovely place at our home. Uh, it, I call it my happy place. Uh, it's covered patio. Um, got the TV if I want to watch something on TV, but it's covered. I like to sit out there with a glass of cab, or sometimes, Nathan, a glass of bourbon, and a good cigar, and just reflect on the day. And here are four questions that I ask myself, and now it's just become a part of my routine. Here are the questions. How did I win today? Or where did I win today? How did I win? Now, we're going to stop just for a moment on this first question and give you the context on how to apply each of these four questions. So, how did I win today? And you could put one of these following words at the end of that sentence and just watch the reflection take off. How did I win? Personally. In my relationships. Or how did I win relationally? You could say that. How did I win physically? How did I win professionally? How did I win spiritually? How did I win mentally? I mean, you can make your own categories. I'm just giving you those basic areas. And what that's going to do is, is allow you to do a quick rewind of the day and watch your brain take over. God created us so uniquely, and he gave us this brain, and our brain just works, man. It's all about focus. What I focus on, my brain will then pull the answers. So asking the question, how or where did I win today in those categories? And what's going to happen is you're going to be able to look back, and you're going to go, okay, I won professionally today here. What does that do for us? You know, for lack of a better word, it's positive vibes. It gives us a little extra juice. We're winding down. It gives us some gratitude, an opportunity to go, you know what? I won with this customer today. I won with my leader today. I won with my team or my coworker today. I won with my wife today. Hey, that's a big one for me. I, I, I need some wins, man. I've been married 24 years. I got to figure this thing out. Like it takes these husbands a long time takes us a long time to figure this stuff out. And here's what I know about being married 24 and a half years. I need to win every day with my wife and with my kids. Am I winning physically? Is my energy low? Did I eat some garbage food that I shouldn't have eaten, right? Where did I win today? Now, this is just, think of this as taking inventory. So as the ideas uh, or actually not ideas, but as the pictures from your day present themselves, then here's the second question. What can I learn from that win? Hey, I won today with a customer or I won with a coworker. I won with my leader. What can I learn from that? And go into the picture. And you don't have to write it down. If you want to write it down, it'd be great. It'd be a great journaling process. But you don't really have to do that. The idea here is, is that you just simply go, where did I win today? And what can I learn from the win? And we're starting from a positive place here. 
right? Because we want to grow from what we learned and we want to be grateful for what we learned. So that's why we start off with where did I win or how did I win? And then what can I learn from the win? So really dive into it. You know what? I, in the past, I've been a little bit defensive in that situation, but today I wasn't. Or in the past, I was oblivious when I came home and I walked in the house and I didn't see this and today I saw it. Oh, so I learned. You know what? Don't just come into the house and get into your routine. Come in the house and be observant. You know, whatever it is. Third question. How did I or where did I lose today? Now, this is painful, but I want you to think of this pain as you would a good workout, right? So I'm working out and, oh my gosh, I did bench today and I, I did butterflies after that and I went really hard on the triceps and I'm walking to the car and I could barely open up the car door and it's like, oh, I'm sore. I'm already sore. I'm already in pain. But I know that it's good pain. So these two questions are painful, but it's good pain. So where did I lose? How did I lose? So again, let's walk through this. Where, where how did I lose personally? Physically, spiritually, mentally, professionally. Let's look at my whole day and where did I lose? Oh gosh, this hurts. Oh, it's painful. This is big boy and big girl stuff. Okay. The, the, what I'm, what I'm uh, pre prescribing here is not complex. It's not incredibly deep. In fact, it's the opposite. It's simple to do. Uh, doesn't require a lot of effort, but boy, oh boy. It's for big boys and big girls who are willing to be mature enough to take full assessment and get full awareness. Self-awareness is a wonder drug, but it is not easy. It hurts. So where did I lose? All right, now, you know what the fourth question is. You can see where we're going, right? We started with where or how did I win today in those areas? And then we said, what did I learn from the wins? And then now we're saying, okay, where did I lose? How did I lose? And so now we got to go, what did I learn from the losses? For years, I got to work with Dr. John Maxwell, and he's now a friend and, and a mentor. And, and he wrote a book entitled, Sometimes You Win and Sometimes You Learn. And that's an adaptation of the famous phrase, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But if we begin to see our losses as opportunities to learn, we are going to really mature and grow. By the way, I'm a parent of three teens, 13, 14, 16. Would you say a prayer, please? But if we as parents, if we would stop trying to protect our kids from losing, these kids don't know how to struggle. And parents, if we said, you know what? I'm not going to always protect from the losses, but I'm going to be there to help them learn from it our kids would develop faster, better, stronger. But we've tried to protect this entire generation of kids. We don't want them to hurt. We want them to feel good instead of teach them how to be good. Can I get an amen somewhere? And so this is the issue. What can I learn? I'm going to go through all my losses and I'm going to make sure that I learn something so that I take the negative and I turn it into a positive. Those four questions can guarantee you win so you'll learn something new every day coming up the four-day work week is it a thing now according to glassdoor the average job offer attracts over 250 applicants if you've made it to the interview you've already made a great impression so now is the time to showcase how you are the best choice for the role that's why we created how to win the interview this free guide will walk you through the five strategies to help you stand out amongst the competition. With just some intentionality, you can prepare yourself to win the interview. Go to kencoleman.com slash interview. Of the people, by the people, for the people. I'm Ken. This is the Ken Coleman Show. I am your coach, counselor, and cheerleader. Thrilled you're here. I have one aim and only one aim, to help you make more income and more impact in your life. Uh, I got to tell you, during the uh, the brief breaks, I like to, I have ADHD, and uh, I'm not medicated, by the way, if anybody's wondering. 
And uh, I like to go into the chat room because we have what I call the YouTube crazies over there. I love these folks. That's a term of affinity. And they are watching the show live right now on YouTube. And then they, they go in and they encourage each other and they comment on just about everything. And so our last segment was, uh, where did I win or where did I lose, right? And it was teaching on where do we win, where do we lose every day, and then what did I learn from the wins and losses. And Grant Lowry, one of our, I'd say Grant's in the uh, founding board, the uh, charter group of YouTube crazies. And uh, Grant's trying to suck up to me, but I'll take it. But he said that I'm winning the wardrobe every day. So I'll take that. Uh, I think he's talking about me. Maybe he's talking about him. I don't know. Now it's awkward. Uh, wearing the golf, wearing the fall golf attire today. Um, it's that time of year. We're going to see a lot of golf pullovers. People are following that I'm taking up golf and trying to get good at it. Well, lots more golf clothes. And thus, uh, there we go. Hey, uh, how many of you would like to get into sales? Or you're in sales and you'd like to lift your lid? I've got a great course for you. Excited about this new venture. We're calling it Ramsey Career Academy. I'm partnering with Ramsey Education and experts, and I am bringing you courses that cost hardly anything. And they take way less time because I have a passion to upskill men and women who do not need to go back and spend the time and money to get a degree. And I'm passionate about that. So here we go. Our next course is Sales 101. We put a lot of time and effort into that name. I mean, hours and hours of whiteboarding to come up with Sales 101. But that is, that is, in fact, the name. It is a fantastic course. I, alongside Chris Campbell, one of our Ramsey Solutions Senior Vice President and one of our top sales guys, leads, trains, salespeople, he and I teaching that course together. Go get it. Uh, you can apply right now, RamseySolutions.com slash sales course. That's RamseySolutions.com slash sales course. Okay, here we go. As a man of the people, I am constantly paying attention to the world of work and trends that you need to know about. And I've been talking about this for some time. And uh, we've got an update. So here we go. In my hands, the latest update. Forbes article, the four-day work week, uh, is now starting to spread around the globe. In June, 70 companies, uh, actually over 70 companies in the United Kingdom, embarked on a six-month pilot program for a four-day work week. Uh, midway through the trial run, here's where they are, the uh, nonprofit that is spearheading this movement is called Four Day Week Global. And they are now reporting halfway through the six-month trial that productivity has been maintained or improved at 95% of the participating firms. So it's halfway through. But apparently productivity has maintained or gotten better. So, okay. Very interesting. And that 86% of the participating companies plan to continue the four-day work week once the trial ends. Now, this is spreading. Uh, the four-day week global organization founded by Andrew Barnes and Charlotte Lockhart. Uh, they've been championing this as a new way of working that they believe will improve productivity, worker health, stronger families and communities. Uh, New Zealand had a company called Perpetual Guardian that adopted this, and they are saying it was wildly successful. Two things they pointed out, productivity increased and employee stress declined. Scotland launched a trial, four-day work week. And uh, then was so popular that the ruling Scottish National Party said they were going to try to make it a law. Workers had their hours reduced by 20%, but did not have any change in compensation. Um, they reported that it saw enhanced employee well-being and positively impacted the bottom line. Spain. And its government agreed to do a 32-hour work week over three years without cutting compensation. And um, this is brand new, so no data there, but this is now launching. Japan is now about ready to launch a similar program. Um, and government, the government of Japan is leading the charge, so they will do this with government employees a four-day work week. Now, this is significant because Japan 
has been so known for people working crazy long hours that the Japanese people have created a term for it called Kuroshi. And it is death by overwork. This is not, this is like a thing. And uh, so, wow. Uh, Eyes on Japan on this one. This will be very, very interesting because of the Japanese culture on this and what the Japanese people have said. And they're saying, hey, I'm not doing it anymore. Iceland. By the way, does anybody work in Iceland? I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. But, I mean, I see all the pictures of Iceland. Like, I, I got one of my kids is telling me, Dad, I really want to take a family vacation to Iceland. My middle son, Chase. He's a worldly kid. He's like, Dad, check it out. So I'm spending some time with Chase looking at, I've, I've gone on the websites and stuff. Amanda, it's pretty beautiful. If I lived in Iceland, I'd have a hard time working indoors. That's my point. All right. Recent study of 2,500 workers in Iceland was conducted to see if the shortened work days led to more productivity and a happier workforce. Between 2015 and 2019, and I bring this study up because it's sizable. Four years they conducted this test. Um... Theirs was slightly different, a 36-hour work week, but no cut in pay. And they said it works great. They love it in Iceland. Uh, Belgium is now looking at it. So here we go. So, and I, I, I got to be careful. Because when I report things, this is the world we live in today. Well, people will hear me say something, and I'm reporting the facts. And then people go, well, Ken, are you are you endorsing a four-day work week? What does Dave Ramsey think about that? Well, first of all, I'm not endorsing it. I'm a man of the people. So I bring you the facts. I bring you the data. But let's look at what the experts and people that are leading these studies and government officials, all the people are saying is the positive play for a four-day work week. Okay? And I'm going to give you my opinion momentarily on where I think it's going. Um, an extra day of life means you're more likely to rest, exercise, schedule doctor visits, enjoy the outdoors, start a hobby, start a side business, play with your kids, volunteer. Now, if you look at where we stand in America right now, 2021 Harvard Business Review, global survey, uh, but specifically these are the findings for American workers. 89% said that work life was getting worse. 85% reported lower levels of well-being and 62% said they had experienced burnout during the pandemic. Now, employers who participated in these pilots are saying that there is increased productivity, stronger talent attraction, and retention of the talent, and sometimes even lower overhead. Now, I want to point out, Alex, we have a guest coming on the program soon who is a, uh, um, she runs an agency in Arizona, and she did this, if I'm not mistaken, the four-day work week. And she's gone public that they did it, they liked it at first, but it created a lot of issues, and they decided not to do it. So I'm going to cover this from all sides. Um, so the issues become the type of business you run and the transitions and the systems that have to change or evolve for this to be implemented properly. Um, but the numbers are good. So where do I think it's going? Uh, I think that it's going to be a major company or two in the United States that will try this. And I think it's probably going to have some positives. And they probably won't adopt it for their entire operation. But just like we saw in the pandemic when Walmart and Target came out and said, we're going to take our minimum wage, not the federal minimum wage, and we're going to move to 20 an hour. And then we're going to pay for your tuition if you come work for us. And you see the dominoes begin to fall. Do I think the four-day work week is coming to the United States? Yes, I do. The world of work is changing, folks. If the thought of attending a networking event makes you break out in hives, 
you're not alone. And I'll let you in on a secret. Networking in the traditional sense doesn't work, but genuine connection is all about relationships. That's why we created networking the right way. This free guide is the low pressure, high impact way to overcome the awkwardness, build real relationships, and turn your connections into opportunities. To get the guide, go to kencoleman.com slash network. Welcome back to The Ken Coleman Show. Thrilled that you're with us. Uh, okay, so as you know, uh, the team uh, led by our fearless producer, Alex Chatfield. By the way, that sounds, when I say it like that, sounds like you should have maybe a uh, ascot on. But that is so not you. You were the flannel skater boy guy, right? Uh, but Alex Chatfield. Sounds very, uh, I like it. Makes my pinky go up a little bit. Yeah, I like it. Uh, so Alex and the social media team, uh, they're always scanning the talk. Um, and for those of you who don't know what that means, I shorten TikTok to talk because it irritates my teenagers. It irritates them to no end. Uh, it bothers them that their dad is on TikTok, which I'm not actually on TikTok. The social media team has a profile for me. It's not on my phone. I don't have time for all that. I'm busy, man. All right? But uh, anyway, it's a big deal, and so we put content out there. So check check us out. If you're on the talk, uh, at Ken Coleman is my, I believe that's my profile. I think it's at Ken Coleman. So you go follow me on TikTok, and I'm going to keep calling the talk because it, it makes people my age laugh, and it irritates young people. So that makes me happy. Well, so anyway, quiet quitting was a big trend that blew up on TikTok, and all these young people are basically coming up with a new way to say something that's been going on for a long time. Okay, so a quick review, because we're about ready to show you a wildly popular TikTok. Well, so quiet quitting was the young generation's way of basically saying, I'm not going to do any more at work than is expected of me. Above and beyond, forget it. I feel devalued. I feel like I work hard enough as it is. I'm only going to do the bare minimum. Now, this is not a new concept. Gallup, the most respected polling data firm in the world for over 10 years, has put out a, a, a work survey every year, and it's like the Bible to me. I read it cover to cover. And, and I've been saying this as long as the Ken Coleman Show has been going. The data hasn't changed. That 68% of American workers are disengaged. Now, that does not mean they hate their job. It just means they're quiet quitting. So I roll my eyes when I get media requests to talk about quiet quitting because I'm middle-aged. Well, so now there's another version. Long setup, but I have to set it up. So the new version is called Act Your Wage. So here is a wildly popular TikTok from a gal by the name of Sarah. I hope I'm saying that right, or is it Sarai? It's spelled S-A-R-A-I. And I don't want to butcher her name, but let's call her Sarah Marie. And she's based in Florida and she does a lot of content. And this TikTok I'm about to show you has gotten 12 million views and counting. And we're going to comment on this. Let's roll this. Do you even know how to do your job? I don't understand what... Hey, Veronica, I'm going to have you take this home and work on it tonight, okay? Respectfully, Susan, I'd rather spend time with my family. Okay. Can I pause that? Can we pause Veronica, that for a second? Did you just decline the Zoom meeting that's at six thirty tonight? Okay, I should have warned you that this character that she's playing, and she's very talented. This young gal, this character is the most obnoxious character I think I've ever seen, even on television. It's Saturday Night Live level, so I I give her props. But this is an annoying character, so you're gonna have to put up with this. And she's obviously playing the role of her boss, and then uh, and the character is uh, Susan is the boss, and Veronica is the obnoxious worker. All right, so. This is what's going on. And I just, I can barely make my way through it. Let's keep going. Oh, yeah, I did. I did do that. Yeah, because it's outside of my working hours, nine to five. So I won't be attending. All right, Veronica, I do need you to be available during your vacation, okay? <laughs> Susan, you'll be oh, blocked. I particularly struggle with that part. Because I won't be answering. Oof. Okay, Veronica, I'm going to need you to complete all of this today. Susan, do I look like two people to you? 
No. Oh, okay, just making sure, because that looks like the work of two people, right, right? And I'm one, I'm just one person, right? Okay, all right. And all right, I, I've had I've had my fill, and I think we've made the point, right? So, what is she doing there? And this is a for those of you that aren't on TikTok, this is a very normal thing, the role play back and forth. And when she's pointing out some absurdities, that that and again, I I, I I'm not criticizing the video. I think she's done a good job with it. The character's so obnoxious that I can barely watch it, uh, but it's funny to people, and I get it. But she is pointing out with satire some extremes. The idea of I'm expecting you to work on your vacation uh, or I'm I'm de uh, delivering a pile of work this high that you have to get done. Uh, you have to be available after hours. And while she is in some ways pointing out some absurdities and the way she's doing it, she she is, in fact, I believe the reason it's gotten 12 million plus views is because she's hit a nerve. And the nerve is, is that people feel overworked and undervalued. So that's where she's crushing it. And, and so she's done a really fun job with the kind of playing this thing back and forth. But people do feel overworked and undervalued. And when that begins to happen, let me tell you what, what really develops below the surface. Us versus them. Because the workers begin to talk about this. The manager sometimes is not an evil person. In fact, many times I'm going to say the manager is not a bad person. They may be a bad manager, but maybe they've never been taught how to lead. Maybe they're overwhelmed, and I'm not making any excuses for, for poor leadership here. Because even if the manager's overwhelmed and has to get a lot done, the manager's got to sit with people and say, hey, um, let, we've got some 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 fires we got to put out. What's the best way to put those fires out without burning you out? And, 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 and so can we go to the second video? Do we have time to show briefly the second video? She does another one where she's flipping it. So that was the, the perspective of the worker. And now she's coming at it from the manager side. I want to show just a little bit of this. Let's roll that. Have a seat, Veronica. Okay. So first it was quiet quitting. Now you told everyone in the office to act their wage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Veronica, you're causing a revolution across all 57 of our offices. You need to stop. What does that even mean? Oh, yeah. So you know how this company doesn't pay us a livable wage and they don't care about us at all? This company does care about all us. All right. We got, the, <laughs> we got the idea there. I, again, I can only handle so much of that character. Uh, but again, so now she's showing the perspective from leadership where leaders are going hey stop talking to everybody else out there this whole actor wage thing uh we're seeing like starbucks is in the middle of a huge fight right now with several other stores that are trying to unionize and so this is an example and she does a wonderful job again on this TikTok of now she's showing the angst and the tension that that leadership is feeling she nails it and they're missing the point and this is what i love about what she just did there they're, they, leaders are coming and going, hey, look, ooh, hey, why are you doing this? Why are you talking about this? Instead of going, wait a second, what do I need to do? What do we need to do as leaders to make people feel valued? Listen, people will work hard for you, leaders. They'll work really hard. They'll go above and beyond if they feel cared for, if they see meaning and purpose in their work, if you recognize them for their unique contribution. If you have an actual relationship with them to be able to see that they're starting to fray so they don't have to come in and tell you. We have a crisis of leadership in this country because leaders have forgotten how to love people. And so workers are going to act this way. And I good on them in the sense of you got to put up some boundaries. Now, here's the thing about these TikTok trends. And if you take what she's doing, which is wonderful satire, and you start to adopt that attitude and you let that seep out, now you got to be careful. So do I think that this is a good trend if it helps younger workers or workers of any age create boundaries? Yes. This is good. This sentiment, this angst, this drive for change is good for you to set up boundaries. Mature conversation with your leader to let you let them know where you are and what you need. If they, if they don't care, then you leave. Well, we got to be very careful that it doesn't turn into acting like a baby at the office. We start sticking our little rumps in the air, walking around, acting like we're victims. That's going to end up hurting you. You just don't need to get fired. I'd rather you leave on your own and leave well. This doesn't need to be a revolution. There just needs to be awareness and boundaries and a, and a worker with boundaries. 
who knows how to approach leadership and then realize either they're going to do something about it or they're not. And if they're not, I'm going to value me and I'm going to walk. That's what we want to come from this. So very interesting trend. Congratulations, Sarah. You're doing a wonderful job. That is fun. This is the Ken Coleman Show. Do you know what you were born to do? In order to get hired at a job you love, you need to get clear on your talent, passion, and mission. That's why our team created the Career Clarity Guide. In just a few minutes, this free tool will walk you through a process to discover what you do best, that's your talent, the work you love to do, that's your passion, and the results that matter to you, your mission. Then you'll feel more confident throughout the job search process. To get started, go to kencoleman.com slash clarity. All right, folks, welcome back to the Ken Coleman Show. About ready to go into our coaching segment where I coach you folks up. But I want to tell you something. You want to hang around because in our last segment coming up, uh, next segment, we're going to do a fun little Ask Ken. We've had a lot of people send me questions on YouTube and social media and so forth, so on. And also, I just told Alex, the producer, we're going to open up this segment with a uh, potentially controversial Halloween candy opinion. I'm going to put myself out there and it feels really good. I put it out on Instagram. If you want to get ahead of me, at Ken Coleman. Put it out this morning. A lot of comments. So we have some fun with that because tis the season to eat Halloween candy. Uh, but first, Oat Neal is on the line in British Columbia, Canada. Oat Neal, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hello. Hello, sir. You're live. What's going on? Uh, not too much. How are you? I'm living the dream. What's going on? That's good. Um, So I graduated in the fall 2021 with a bachelor's in computer science. Um, I didn't complete a co-op work term, and I'm still looking for a job. My question is, at what point do I give up looking for a job in my field and uh, pursue what I'm currently doing, which is uh, construction? Okay. What made you get into computer science and and pursue that field? Um, I, I like computers, and they interest me. Okay. And let's just assume for a moment that um, that you had gotten a job and you were in the field and you saw a ladder, meaning an opportunity to really, really grow. Would you be calling me about this question? No. Okay, then. So what do you think my answer is? Should you quit? I shouldn't quit. No, oh, man. All right, let, let me keep digging a little bit. Are you good with computers and technology in general? I mean, I like to think I am, but... Okay, stop with the humble stuff or the I'm not confident. It's just you and me and millions of other people listening. Don't worry about it. (laughs) Are you good at technology? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Do you enjoy it? Does it light you up? Do you lose track of time when you get involved in something from a technical matter, technology matter? Do you you really look forward to it at times? Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Does it produce results or you can see results that you working in technology, that if you produce these results, it would mean something to you? I mean, in, in this right way, yeah, but for now it's just been... I didn't say for now. I'm saying, can you see results that, and do you know results that you would love to produce through the work that you love of technology, yes or no? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I just walked you through my entire methodology. Talent plus passion plus mission equals purpose. In other words, when I use what I do best, talent, to do work that I love, passion, to produce results that matter deeply to me, mission, I am doing what I was created to do. Thus, I have an opportunity to produce greatness through my uniqueness. Do you understand that, young man? Yes. Do you believe that makes sense? Yep. Then no freaking way do you quit. (laughs) Don't ever quit. Now, I'm going to tell you something, man. I've been there. I started into broadcasting at 33 with no degree, no experience. 
three babies under three. A wife and a mortgage. I had to balance a lot. And I got told many times that I was too old. And one specific guy who's still in radio told me once to my face, Coleman, you need to give it up. You don't have the talent to make it in a number eight radio market. Hmm. I believed him for a couple days. But I kept going. And it hurt, and it sucked, and it was lonely. But at some point, I had to choose whether or not I believed that guy was right. And now, I have a syndicated radio show. I'm on Sirius XM. I co-host the second largest radio show in the world. Take your eight market and shove it, pal. Yeah. Yeah? So here's the yeah. deal. Turn rejection into redirection. It hurt. We opened up today's show. Where did I win today? Where did I lose today? You know where you lost the last couple of days? People rejected you. They didn't even return your resume request. Hey, what did I learn? That I still want to do it. That I still can do it. That I need to do it. So we're going to go from should be to could be to must be. Don't you dare quit, O'Neal, or you're going to be an old man who's full of regret and resentment. You were created to fill a unique role through your work, but it can feel overwhelming to figure out what that is. That's why I created the Get Clear Career Assessment. In just 15 minutes, you'll get customized results that clarify what you do best, the work you love to do, and the results that motivate you. All this helps you discover what you were born to do. And you'll get a list of professional possibilities to help you in your job search. To get started, go to kencoleman.com slash assessment. Nice bump, Joe. Uh, you're trying to get me to play air guitar in front of the people sitting in the lobby, but I resisted it. I, I, you got to stay in your lane. You know, kind of reminds me of that scene from Hitch with Will Smith and uh, Kevin James when he's teaching him how to dance. He's going to go out with a pretty lady, and he says, "You're going to be dancing with her, and when you dance, you got to keep it right here, like, like nothing outside of this motion right here." And so, air guitar for me, it, it's just not a good look. Um, okay, hey, if you're enjoying the show. Uh, please, whatever format, podcast, uh, YouTube, uh, like, uh, share, subscribe. We're growing. We're having record growth uh, through the summertime and into the fall, and uh, I'm grateful for that. But we really do want to share this message that everybody has a unique role that they need to fill, that they are needed and they must do it. And uh, we'd love uh, for your help. So if you like the show, give us a thumbs up. If you're watching live on YouTube, uh, if you're listening on podcasts, whenever, wherever, uh, like it, subscribe, please share it. That would be uh, wonderful. Okay, so a little bit of fun because it's a Friday. Uh, but I like to have fun every day. But uh, so I saw this image uh, uh, a couple weeks ago and I saved it. And I thought, well, today is the day. Because, Alex, I walked into my kitchen last night and what was on the counter? A giant bag of candy corn. A giant bag. And I was immediately revolted. So put the image up there for everybody to see. Our folks in the lobby, I have to describe this. This says, this image is how to eat candy corn. I just shared this on my Instagram, at Ken Coleman. You can go look at it. And it's got, th it's got the candy corn in three sections. One, open the bag. Two, pour candy corn into a trash can. Three, eat Reese's peanut butter cup. Yes! What do the people say about that? Seriously, why would you ever eat candy corn when you got a perfectly good Reese's peanut butter cup available to you? And I'm looking into the audience. I have several people who agree with me. Uh, so, I mean, why? You only have so many calories in your life. Why would you put that into your stomach? The way it tastes and feels, I, it feels like I'm eating something that's not even real food. But chocolate and peanut butter is what God intended for candy. If God had created candy on the eighth day, he would have started with a Reese's peanut butter cup. Uh, I'm here to tell you. So there it is. A little bit of fun. If you disagree with me, you can go on Instagram and make your case uh, as to why anyone should ever eat candy corn. 
All right. Uh, switching gears. Don't forget about my friends at ZipRecruiter. Uh, we're going to be teaching on this next week. I do think the window in the job market is starting to move down a little bit. In other words, um, I, I think if you're thinking about making a move, I would make the move in the next six months. I'd be thinking about that. So are my friends at ZipRecruiter, free service to you. If it takes you about five minutes, fill out a profile at ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken and upload your resume, go do life, and they go working for you. They send you uh, direct connections to companies who say, I want to interview person XYZ. ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. Okay. So this is our Ask Ken segment. Right? Is, that, is that what we're doing? Do we? Is, I go right into these. These... These are, these are questions that people have sent. So if you have a question for me that you'd like me to address on the show, you can email ask at kencoleman.com, ask at kencoleman.com, or you can drop a comment here on this video uh, or anything you're watching, uh, or you can send me a DM uh, on social at Ken Coleman at Instagram. Now, I do reply in my DMs. But I will tell you that I get a lot of complex, complicated questions in my Instagram DM, and I can't answer that. I can't answer the complicated ones, but I'm here most every day. And when I can speak to you, go back and forth, I have a much better uh, ability to be able to help you. Uh, but if it's short, simple, sweet, to the point, you want my opinion, uh, you can DM me at, at Ken Coleman on Instagram. Okay, here we go. I'm going to get to as many of these as we can. This is fun. Um, uh, okay. So <laughs> we'll start with a fun one. This is, this is appropriate. So Betty Smith, uh, I had put out a, a video on Instagram about a company and we did, we reported it on the show, but about, uh, about, uh oh, YouTube. Thank you, Alex. Uh, these are all YouTube questions. Uh, folks, I'm, 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 I'm a middle-aged dad. I, I really shouldn't be left alone in here sometimes. These are all YouTube submitted questions. Okay. So we reported on the show about a company in Canada that was hiring a chief candy taster and they were going to pay $78,000 a year. This is a real job. Um, and uh, Betty replied, how's the dental insurance? Hey, Betty. Very nice. Um, Alex Hickson on companies doing the quiet firing. Okay. So if you haven't heard me talk about this, quiet firing is... You know, it's like an iteration of quiet quitting. It's where they're saying that bosses are just slowly ignoring people or rejecting them. I call it the bad breakup. You know what I mean? Like where your girlfriend just doesn't ever want to be with you and it goes on for two weeks and you're like, what's going on? I'm telling you what's going on. She's quiet breaking up with you. I'm not going to comment whether or not that ever happened to me. <clears throat> uh, Alex Hickson writes on companies quiet firing. Doesn't this cost the company money too? It does. A lack of productivity. So this comes from a leader who's a coward. A leader who doesn't have the guts to sit down with a person and go, hey, it ain't working out. We're going to let you go. So what do they do? They ignore the person. They confuse the person. They do all kinds of things to make the person not feel wanted, hoping that the person will quit instead of them being a leader and handling it. Um. Diana Torres says, hi, Ken, love the show, and I'm hooked. What? Oh, whose boxing gloves are on the shelf? Oh, that's fun. Can I stand up and get those, or am I going to? Hold on, let me see if I can do this. Yeah, this is very exciting. So the boxing gloves on the shelf, I'm so glad she asked this. Nobody's ever had this. This is a signature of my favorite boxer of all time. I'm a child of the 80s. Don't judge me. Sugar Ray Leonard. Sugar Ray Leonard, fantastic boxer. Um... And growing up, he just had a ton of charisma, and I got to meet him one time and uh, spent a little time with him, and he gave me these signed boxing gloves. They're on the shelf because they are uh, symbolic of me fighting for you. So there you go. You may think it's cheesy. I don't care. Um, I'm helping you fight your fear, your doubt. And uh, so to me, when we started the show, I said, I want that up there to remind me every day that I'm here to fight for you your worth, your value, your contribution. So that's why I do that. So we'll put that there next to one of my other favorite props, the old school pencil sharpener, which actually works. So there you go. All right, next question. Another page. I don't know if I want to go with that question. Uh, I might come back to that one. Jennifer. Oh, this is email, Jennifer. 
Okay, I was. She emailed ask at kencoma.com. I was scrolling on LinkedIn the other day and noticed a post that I found quite interesting. I'd love to hear your feedback, Ken. Uh, do we have an image for this one? Okay, please stop. It says in all bold letters, expecting candidates to come to an interview bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and eager to tell you how they can help your company succeed. Then the person says they are tired. They are overworked. They are trying to escape toxic workplaces. An interview should not have to be a performance. She wants me to comment on that? I have high blood pressure immediately. Put that back up there. Who is the person that posted that? Who is that person? What do they do? Uh, okay, so this is a person. I'm not going to call their name out, but they are the founder and CEO of a thing Okay, that uh, something about humans in the world. I don't want to call them out and be really mean. This is ridiculous. You should go. She's dead wrong. She is a snowflake and is now trying to appeal to other snowflakes. Yes, you should go to a job interview, enthusiastic, and understand that it is, in fact, a performance. <laughs> what are we doing? They're tired. Yeah, I'm tired. I heard some guy the other day, 26 years old, co-worker, tell me, Ken, I'm so tired. I get pissy when I hear people talk about being tired. All right? I'm tired. I got three teenagers and a super energetic doodle. I, at the end of today's show, my brain is like this. I'm tired. Yeah, you know what? It's your freaking job and your freaking life. You should go in there prepared and enthusiastic and tell them why you're going to help them win. That's what you ought to be doing. Such victim thinking, stinking thinking. This is The Ken Coleman Show. Press on. Thanks for listening to The Ken Coleman Show. For more, you can find the show on demand wherever you listen to podcasts and watch the show on YouTube. You can also find Ken across all social media by following at Ken Coleman.